So welcome everyone to today's uh, Maple Canadian College Town Hall webinar. Uh, every Wednesday at 2 p.m. we host a webinar focused on one aspect of our program or another. Um, today we are focusing on um, uh, a day in the life at Maple Canadian College. So we have for you um, one of our teachers, um, a spectacular educator, I'm going to say, um, a, a really engaging uh, teacher. I pop into his online classes. I used to pop into his classroom classes a lot, as the students know. And uh, I don't know, was I disruptive, Alicia? Oh, I, I do attend his classes. Uh, but when I do drop into your classes, am I? No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Good answer. Um, so uh, I get to see Mr. Sam a lot, um, and he's really a spectacular educator. He teaches uh, sciences. And uh, uh, even, you know, when we move to Zoom, Mr. Sam is very innovative, uh, comes up with a lot of new technologies that he utilizes to engage his students. Uh, so a really spectacular educator. And anybody here from a school, please don't steal him from us. Thank you. Uh, we also have three of our students. Um, you know, we have 25 students all together. And, uh, they're all spectacular individuals. I have to tell people that for many, many years I taught and was in the education sector in Canada and the U.S. And never in those 40 years or so have I come across a class that I am so attached to. Uh, these students are, you know, just the in my mind, the cream of the crop. I couldn't believe it when I got to Nigeria and met these uh, fabulous kids. Hardworking, uh, tenacious, they have a voice, and we focus on those things in the school uh, a lot. And um, we have for you three of three, and you know, I would say three spectacular students, but all 25 of them are spectacular. So this is a sampling of our students. We have here Jamie, who will introduce herself shortly. Maybe you could wave Jamie and say hello. Hello, hello everyone. My name is Jamie Mkoji. Yes, hi. <laughs> and uh, I, you notice I didn't try to pronounce her last name. So, uh, Jamie, thank you. Thank you for coming. And we have with us Alicia Boyene. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. My name is Alicia Kenne. Thank you for being here, Alicia. And we also have a young man who, you know, this kid is going places. I, I tell him that a lot because he's just got such, all, all three of these individuals are spectacular. Praise is such a hard worker. He's got such a good attitude, as do Jamie and Alicia. Um, and as I said, he gives me a hug every day. So Praise, thank you for coming. Do you want to good say? afternoon, everyone. My name is Praise. Hi. And praise, I want to hear your voice because, uh, you know, you're an excited guy. And I appreciate that. So, um, I'm going to just start with a little bit of an overview of Maple Canadian College. Um, so, we, Maple Canadian College, the mission and vision um, is, is very important to us. We want to be a world, we want to provide a world-class education to Nigerian students. And that's what we've uh, done this year. 
Um, our vision is to be a model for innovative teaching. And we achieve these things in part through a partnership that we have with a company in Toronto, Canada called Rosedale Academy. And Rosedale Academy has built their courses around the Ontario curriculum standards and they're, they're very rigorous courses. I think the students maybe will tell you that. Uh, they're very rigorous courses and the students end up with an Ontario secondary school diploma. So when they apply to university, the universities are looking at an Ontario transcript of course, they know they're international students, but uh, because they have the Ontario transcript, they're actually eligible for, for scholarships, both for Ontario students and for international students. Um, so uh, that's our mission and vision at the school. Uh, the instructional paradigm is to encourage uh, the academic, emotional, social, personal growth of mm -hmm. the unique learner to engage them authentically, to respect them as competent young adults. And uh, I hope that uh, uh, the students here today will, uh, will acknowledge that because to me that's a very critical, very important part of the educational model that we have, which is respect. Um, we really focus on keeping abreast of new technologies. We want students, I always say to the students, when you get to whatever university you're going off to, I want you to be on an equal footing with your peers. But I want you to take with you the characteristics of a Nigerian student, which is courteousness, respect, hard work, tenacity, beginning with the end in mind, um, all those sorts of things. And uh, um, I, I hope that we've achieved that with this group of, uh, of students. So um, here's where we're located. We're in Leckie phase one. Um, here's the school, it's a brand new building. I, I guess I, let me just actually stop. I did introductions, but I neglected to mention uh, the individual who's responsible for this building that you see and who's responsible for bringing this vision to life. Um, you know, somebody who is doing this uh, work out of a sense of altruism and a sense of doing something important. And that's our, the president of the company, Mrs. Obaro. Mrs. Obaro, can you say hello in a few words? Mrs. Obaro. I think maybe she's frozen. My apologies, folks. Um, I don't know, I guess I had uh, some kind of an internet outage, so my apologies for that. Um, are you all there, Ms. Obaro, can you hear me? Um, can somebody, Jamie, uh, can you turn on your... Again, my apologies. Um, Jamie, can you hear me? Can anyone hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, beautiful, thank you. Um, it's telling me my internet connection is stable, which is really unusual. Um, Ms. Obaro, are you there? Can you say hello? Hello, everyone. 
And Mrs. Obaro, you have to maybe say a few words. Your vision. Okay. Um, once again, uh, it's nice to see you all. And uh, the whole idea of this college is to ensure that our students obtain the high school, Canadian high school diploma before going abroad. And the reason is so that they can cover the gap between the uh, Nigerian um, Y curriculum and the Canadian high school curriculum. And the good thing about the certificate they get is that it's acceptable all over the world. Even in the UK, uh, you don't need a level to go to university. Like uh, Alicia got into university in the UK with her OSSD results. So we've achieved a lot this year. Our students have done extremely well, way beyond my expectation. I mean, a lot of them came out with 90s and 80% average and, and got into top universities all over the world. Congratulations to you. Yeah, Thank you. I, I think Thank that, you, I think that uh, every one of our students received uh, multiple acceptance uh, offers. Um, Alicia is going to the University of Sheffield, and maybe as we go through this, um, you can talk about your future plans as well um, and how you feel prepared. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, um, state-of-the-art facilities, I'm not going to go into some of the stuff. Here are, here's a group of our students. I'm not sure if all 25 are there. Uh, I haven't counted them before. But uh, let's, at this point, so that's a little bit about our school. You're going to have time for questions, um, but right now what I'd like to do is turn things over to Mr. Sam. Uh, if I can find my mouse. Um, and Mr. Sam is going to talk to you about a day his day, a day in his life at Maple Canadian College because his life at Maple Canadian College is a little bit unique. So, Mr. Zam, thank you for being here. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Lee. Good afternoon once, once again to everybody here. Um, did you want to share? Did you want to share anything, Mr. Shigun, or Mr. No, sir. Uh, okay. No, I'm not sharing anything. Thank okay. you. Okay. So, thank you once again for having me here. It is a great pleasure to be here to you know talk to people about Maple Canadian College. <clears throat> um, just as Mr. Stanley said, my day it a day in my life in MCC is quite unique because apart from being one of the instructors at the school, I am also one of the uh, house parents at the male hostel. And so it, it typically for me starts at the hostel. And uh, I must say that it has been a very good experience for me. You know, being with the students every day, not just in school, but then to also get to experience them also at the hostel has been really great. So typically, uh, we wake up early in the mornings every day to get ready for school because the military is a bit uh, far from school. So we had to commute from the uh, boys hostel to the school. So we get, uh, we get up early every morning and uh, we prepare ourselves between the hostels and the boys get ready. And then uh, we set out to school. And um, in school, we have, like Mr. Andy has been trying to say since morning, we have uh, quite a unique uh, kind of um, schedule because number one, first one of the first differences you will see in our schedule, which is not the usual kind of Nigerian schedule, is we have a, rotation, a rotationary kind of um, schedule. We have a four-day rotation kind of schedule. So we have day one, two, three, four, and then cycle um, continues like that. So every day we have classes, and uh, each of the subjects get um, one hour thirty minutes for lecture time every day. So. After we get to school, uh, I, I guess everything for the day's activities and whenever I have my classes, I go to class to make it to students. So basically, my day revolves, that's how my day goes around. And after classes, I get to speak with students, I mean, with staff. Thank you, Mr. Stanley, for sharing that. So that is uh, 
um, our schedule starts eight thirty a.m. and then we we are in school up to four o'clock in the evening. So that's our speaker day is it's um, thirty minutes of lunch break in between, and then we also have um. So typically in the class, uh, I guess I probably I'll see another time to talk more about the class, but the class is and it's one of the high points for me every day. I this semester I'm teaching biology, which is I like it on the screen, FBI for you. <clears throat> and um before we came home due to the uh, um, pandemic it has, it has been a great experience for me. It really focuses on the students doing what they are learning. So there is a lot of focus on doing rather than just you know getting information. You it is more project based. It's hands on. That you know is being graded on. So they and you don't expect. I mean, exceeding well. They and they have high grades in course. So basically, the experience for me has been, has been wonderful, and um, I'm really glad and happy to be part of the Nip Canada College family. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you, Mr. Sam. Um, if anybody has any questions for Mr. Sam a little bit later, um, we'd be happy to take those. So now let's jump to the students and hear what they have to say about uh, our school. This is the part where I kind of grimace a little bit, but uh, <laughs> I'm pretty confident. So we'll start with the first one I can see, which is Jamie. And Jamie, we uh, it, it's kind of a, a nice day because Jamie has her principal, her previous principal from her previous school uh, here, and as well as the uh, dean of students for her previous school, fathers uh, Christopher and Dominic. So it's been a bit of an old home week uh, here, and uh, it's really exciting for me to talk to people who. Uh, knew our students since they were 10 years old and so on. So, uh, Jamie. Yes, yes, sir. So, do you want to talk about a day in the life of, uh, in your, your life? Yes, I would love to. The day, a day in my, in a day, a day in my life at Maple Canadian College is really I have to define it as tasking. It's a very, very tasking. A day in my life is really, really tasking at Maple Canadian College because it requires a lot from the students, not just the teachers as well. A typical class at Maple Canadian College has to do mostly with has a typical class at Maple Canadian College is really interactive. The teachers don't just come into class and explain, but they also they also illustrate using videos and a lot of diagrams as well. Maple Canadian College, like as Mr. Hanley said, is combined. The curriculums are combined. Nigerian and Canadian curriculums are combined. This actually helps the students to gain more experience based on application. The, the means of learning is not just theoretical, like the Nigerian curriculum. It, is, it mostly focuses on application. Application questions are set for you, and this requires a lot of brain work. As a science student at Maple Canadian College, I am presented with a lot of research to do, especially on subjects like biology and chemistry. A lot, and in a, in a week, you can have like three to four research works to do. So it's really, really tasking. That's all I can say. Okay. 
Thank you so much, Jamie. Um, let's move on to uh, actually, Jamie. A couple of other things in your day. Uh, aren't you mm -hmm. a aren't you a prefect at the uh, girls' residence? Yes, I'm a prefect. I'm a labor prefect. I make sure everyone does their chores on time. Yes, and the yeah. that is clean. So yeah. And Jamie is also our. We don't have a bell system in the school, so Jamie is our bell lady. <coughs> and I think five minutes or ten minutes before class is going to end, she goes in the hall and rings the bell, so we all know. And then on the, you know, at the time when the class ends, she rings the bell again. And then students typically have uh, anywhere between five and 15 minutes before their next class. Um, so Jamie is one of our, oh, it's saying my internet uh, connection's unstable, so I may leave again, in which case, Mr. Sam, if you could just continue with uh, the students. But I will now introduce Alicia, who is uh, going off to the University of Sheffield in the UK. And she actually does a very good uh, British accent already. So uh, yeah, I'm sure she's going to fit in there well. So. Alicia, what can you tell us about uh, Maple Canadian College? Thank you for the introduction, Mr. Hanley. Um, so a typical day in Maple Canadian College for me is actually very exciting because I have found myself looking forward to all the classes because of how the educational system is like arranged. Um, usually, like I have been, I have grown up with just okay, stick to your textbooks, like, just read words in your textbook and put it down. But then when I got here, that was actually a bridge that was very difficult to cross for me because I was so used to having, like, my textbooks and just having to read and copy and paste what was in them. But with the support system that we have here, like, our teachers, our staff, and even our principal, like, they really encourage us to push, uh, they really push our limit. They push us to, like, do greater things. Like, I've been able to now fit myself properly and research. I can do a lot of research. I get to know, like, outside, I get to think outside the box. I'm more, like, I find it very efficient. Um, then there are also days that I look forward to because of lunch, because, well, lunch is lunch. Then, what else can I say about my day in local Canadian college? Well, can I, can I um, just mention that, you know, when you mentioned lunch, the thing that I always notice, because I almost always goes down to the lunchroom and chat with the kids, is that they're very tight. They're a tight group of students who, you know, um, support each other, and I think they've really developed some lifelong friendships. So, Alicia, am I right about that? Yes, sir. You are. I feel like, obviously, everybody came from different places, and back. everybody has different backgrounds, but we've just been able to become a family in Maple Canadian College. Okay, thank you so much. Um, now we will go to the guy who gives me a hug almost every day. Uh, he hasn't lately because uh, we've been socially uh, distanced, but I'd like to introduce uh, my good friend, Praise I Oyalo. Oli Ayo Awali. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Honey. Thank you for the introduction, Mr. Honey. So my typical day from in my MCC life starts from the hostel, actually, because I stay in the hostel. So it starts from, as Mr. Sam said, waking us up. And one of the funny things is that Mr. Sam always comes around to wake us, wake us up, sorry, to wake us up in the morning, and he's always tapping my foot. 
<laughs> so if you don't stand up and Mr. Sam comes around for the second time and you're still on your bed, then something must be wrong with you. But I mean, it's all fun. So Mr. Sam wakes us up in the morning. Sometimes most of us wake up by ourselves. So we, what we do is, as the assistant house captain, one of my friends, David, wakes up first all the time. So he goes around waking everyone up before Mr. Sam comes. So some, most times we try to impress Mr. Sam and say, ah, oh, Mr. Sam, we don't need you to wake us up this morning. And then after that, we freshen up and prepare our stuff for school. But what, most, what we do mostly is um, prepare our stuff the night before. So we don't have to rush when the bus comes in the morning. So then we go. After that, we get we get on the bus. And the bus rides are always fun in the morning because we have our laptops and we play music, crack, make jokes, and just basically have fun with each other before we go in for a serious day. So when we get to school, um, we get to go have breakfast. That's one important time of the day. Although I like to skip it sometimes. But yeah, we go for breakfast and sometimes we go to school late because some people just decide that, okay, I'm going to wake up late today and then we have to bear the consequences. And there was a few instances where some people were left behind, but the boss had to go back for them, obviously, because they were late. And Mr. Hanley told us that you guys don't get to school before 7.30, you guys don't eat that morning. And some of us, we just, because sometimes in the morning, the night before, you do some tasks that are really um, draining. So you need your food in the morning and you're hungry. So if you just by mistake, just don't wake up on time. <laughs> you have to wait till about 1.30 or so to get your lunch. So after that, we, not, all, not every time we have assembly. We have a, I think assembly Mondays and Fridays um, because our um, curriculum is basically you start your morning from your, um, we have study groups in the morning, we have study periods in the morning. And then from there, we start our day, and Mr. Sam and Mr. Hani have mentioned, and my two other friends have mentioned. Yeah, my day most times is very fun because I have one free period, and that free period that is to unwind. Although most classes are very tasking, and as Alicia said, um, coming from different type of curriculums makes it like harder to adjust. But with time, you adjust because the way the curriculum is built is meant to add, um, allow anyone coming from any type of background to be able to adjust well and adapt with the curriculum. So as Alicia said, with your textbooks, so I'm used to having my notebook, although in this curriculum you have to have your notes because not everything is on there for your mood. And our teachers are very fantastic people in their different fields. They have, for instance, when I used to take SCH for you, with Mr. Sam, because that's I took um, physics, chemistry, and English, and function for grade eleven in semester one. When I used to take um, chemistry with Mr. Sam, Mr. Sam is very I would call him a, a guru of chemistry because he's good, like he's good. So he makes learning chemistry really good and really fun. So if you're a science student and you have people like Mr. Sam, Ms. Dinah teaching you, trust me, I wasn't that good at physics before, but as I started learning with Miss Dinah, Miss Dinah broke physics down to the point where I was able to love the subject more. And at the end of the day, I left, um, oh, I finished physics with the grade 80 in, from semester one. So yeah, my day in Neville Can Canadian College is really fun. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that praise. Um, we love it when it's, uh, I, my philosophy as an educator is I, I was an English teacher and kind of focused on Shakespeare, Shakespearean literature. And, you know, people hear Shakespeare and they go, oh, geez, you know. So my philosophy was I have to make this fun in order for students to want to come to class so that they can learn the skills and aptitudes that they need to be successful in life. So we really try to have uh, an enjoyable atmosphere. 
on very rare occasions i have to come into our assemblies on mondays or fridays and talk about uh, expectations and get people back on the right track um but that happens rarely and uh you know people say to me how do you like legos because i'm a canadian obviously and people say how do you like legos and i say I love my job, and I really do love my job. So, with that, um, we are about uh, 15 or 20 minutes away from the end. We would love to hear questions that you might have. Uh, for people who haven't spoken yet, there should be, uh, if you put your mouse down along the bottom of the window, you should see, um, a microphone icon um, so I can unmute I can try to unmute everyone I think um, I can't see how to do that but if you just turn on your microphone down in the bottom corner uh, feel free to ask a question ah, I see our friend a la Ala Alu is here, and I think Ala Alu, you know, prays. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Hani. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. I actually have a question. Sure. Okay, so um, my question is for any of the students, if they don't mind. It's supposing you don't have a computer, are you going to be like, at a disadvantage if you join Maple. Praise? Yes, I would like to say yes, yes, a very big disadvantage. I actually have changed my laptop up to three times because <laughs> my laptop <laughs> kept breaking because of the flex and different things. But if I, I would advise that you learn to, if you're going to, get a laptop first you have to learn to take care of your laptop because it's not something we're used to doing without because most of us don't go to school with laptops so it's not something we're used to doing taking care of a laptop and i was very careless with mine and they me and alicia they had the same laptop since the beginning and i think i'm on my third <laughs> on my third laptop now and part of the problem is they carry their laptops around open like this. I can't show you with my laptop because I'm on. Well, Mr. Mr. Hanley, you know we always have work to do. So whenever we're moving, we have to keep it open. Yeah. Then you've advised Close, us to... Closing it, it and then reopening it just requires a password. And then you don't go through three laptops in a semester, in a year. <laughs> But Alicia and Jamie didn't go through three laptops. But so the answer to your question, uh, Ola Olu, is that yes, you have to have a computer. Um, I, you could get by with a tablet as long as um, it was a you know a fairly good tablet that will support Microsoft applications. Um, but Essentially, all the course content is online. So let me just give you a quick uh, show and tell. Um, so I am going to show you. Hold on one sec. I'll, I'm going to show you calculus and vectors. One second. So this is the uh, Calculus and Vectors course, and of course you have to access it online. And as Praise mentioned, there are no textbooks. We have textbooks, of course, in our library, but on a you know, class-to-class -class basis, you're not using uh, textbooks. So here's, uh, you know, there's a video about rate of change. Uh, this is an introduction, um, introductory page and then over here oh, it's saying my internet is unstable so hopefully I stay here uh, so when I click on the first 
uh, lesson. It shows me the learning goals, success criteria, and then there's a pre-skills check. So if I click on that, I'm going to go to this uh, quiz, and uh, it's a pre-skills check. Now I've got to tell you, if I have to do these, um, I'm going to do really badly. But uh, Praise could probably do it, and Alicia and Jamie, they could answer these questions, but unfortunately I can't. So, uh, yes, you do need to have a laptop. Um, so that's the answer to your question, Alawala. Thank you very much. And we're really hoping that we have you at our school next year. Alo Alo has been to every one of our webinars and uh, really appreciate that. So, any other questions? Um, Irene, can you tell us? Um, you have to click your microphone icon. Actually, maybe I can do that for you. Let me just wait a second. Uh, Irene, I'm going to try to, I'm going to unmute you. And Irene, Hello. there you go. So tell us about yourself. Are you looking for a school for yourself or a student? Okay. No, no, I am not a student. So do you have a son or a um, I am a mom. <laughs> ah, okay. I am I am um uh Amy Ogulua and of and Ogulua's mommy. I'm their mother. Oh okay, okay. Great. Very nice to meet you. Um nice to meet you. so he is a very uh mature individual. You must be very proud. <laughs> Okay, let's okay. go. I, have you? Go ahead. No, no, no. I don't think I don't think my I don't think my children have spoken yet. You don't think they've spoken? Okay, um, Ebenezer. I am, sorry. Go ahead. Maybe you're mix me, mixing me up with another one. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, which, who's your child? Um, we're not yet students. We are, we are, pro, uh, we are intending students. Okay, great. Well, thank you for coming. Um, Obadiah. I am going to unmute you. Maybe you can tell, or no, sorry, uh, Obadiah, there we go. Obadiah, I am unmuting you, I hope. And uh, again, folks, you can just, uh, down in the bottom corner, or bottom, you can click uh, on the icon for um, the microphone. Um, well, let's go to Ebenezer, since you're unmuted. Ebenezer, maybe tell us about yourself. Parent, student, interested, educator. Oh, Ebenezer's uh, muted again. Um... So again, folks, down, uh, Ebenezer, your microphone is on now. Maybe you can introduce yourself and just tell us who you are. Okay, uh, I'm, a, I'm a student. So I just, so I've um, joined this webinar before the past one. And I'm the one that asked about med school before one time. I don't know if you can remember. 
Okay, so Ebenezer, you had heard about the school before. I just wasn't sure what uh, what else you said. No, I, I <laughs> the program is what is what I'm I'm, I'm interested in it. I okay, just, I just saw it on Facebook, so ah, just okay. just to log in. Great. And what uh, grade are you just finishing now? What level? I'm no longer in secondary school. So do you have your SS? Do you have your SS2 or your SS3? Yes, I, I do. Okay, perfect. So, um, well, if you have any questions about the school, please let me know. Um, I'm also going to put in the chat area my email address. So if you have any other questions, please feel free to uh, email me. Uh, the email address is just principal at maplecc.ca. So Canada in the education sector, they're usually a dot CA uh, suffix. So principal at maplecc.ca. Um, Jamie, can you talk about uh, yes. the course spread? So basically we have seven, you, we have seven to eight courses. A person can have a maximum of seven to eight courses. So, and then these courses are spread, spread, uh, they're spread along 10 months in total. The first five courses, you're going to take them in your first semester and the first semester has five months in total. The second semester has five months in total for your second, for the second half of the courses you're going to take. So, for the first half, for the first half of, for the first half of the 10 months, which is five months, you're going to be taking four courses max, four courses max. And once you're done, you're going to take an exam, an OSSSD exam to determine your average for the four, for the four courses that you took for the first semester. The second semester, you have an exam as well. It's basically the same thing with the first semester. Yeah, yeah so we, um, you know, because we're it's a small class in this first year, we were able to, you know, most students were traveling together to classes, but then um, as you perhaps noticed from the uh, timetable that I put up, let me just see if I've still got it. Yeah, there it is. So uh, as you can see from this timetable, um, in the first period, if students aren't taking either health or wellness or business leadership, then they would have a prep. Uh, most students are taking advanced functions, English. Um, so in order to earn a, an Ontario Secondary School diploma, you have to have six 12th grade courses and uh, and the courses you see that they have a course title like HFA for you you means uh, four means it's the fourth year grade 12 and you means it's for a university entrance student um, <clears throat> on this particular calendar they're all U level courses so world history functions uh, biology and so on uh, but we have other uh, courses that are not university bound um, so as Jamie said typically a student there's would could take up to four courses each semester so they could take up to eight courses um, one course that almost, I think all of the students, except perhaps one, took grade 11 math in the first semester to get them caught up 
in terms of the gap between the Nigerian curriculum and the Canadian curriculum. And then in the second semester, they went into the grade 12 levels of those math courses. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, they're, you know, um, the class averages are in the 90s in both of the uh, grade 12 courses. So the students are doing spectacularly well. Um, if you have any other questions, please go ahead and ask. But what I'm going to do is actually just go back to, um, to a different share. Hold on. Ah, there it is. Give me a second, sorry. Um, so be, uh, some people came here late, so let me just tell you a little bit about the school. Um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to deal with those as well. Just raise your hand or uh, put something in the uh, text messaging and I will see it. Um, so uh, the mission and vision of the school is to be a world-class level school in Nigeria delivering a Canadian curriculum. So we want the students to be set on a path towards success. And that success is more than just taking certain courses. It's also developing character traits, skills, and aptitudes like perseverance and uh, what's the word I always say, Jamie? Sorry? Tenacity. What's the word? Tenacity. I always talk about tenacity. You never give up. You always push. And we want the students to know that they're respected both in our school and they need to demand respect and earn respect when they move on from our school. So we really want them to be on a level playing field academically, but students from Nigeria are going to really excel in terms of their uh, cur how courteous they are, how respectful they are, all of those things that parents hope to develop in their children, uh, I've seen just across the board with Nigerian students. So we also, as a school, we want to be a model for innovative teaching. We talk as a staff about 21st century teaching and learning skills, which is collaborative, project-based, things like that. Praise, what are you laughing about there, buddy? Okay. Yeah. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we have an enabling partnership with a Toronto-based company called Rosedale Academy. They are accredited. They have built all the courses. So when I was showing you that uh, calculus and vectors course, that's Rosedale Academy. So. Rosedale actually issues the student their Ontario Secondary School Diploma. Um, they come to MCC, but they're earning an Ontario Diploma. Um, so that's a little bit, oops. Uh, sorry, I lost the share. Let me start, let me get back there. Um, so our instructional paradigm is to encourage academic, emotional, social, personal growth in each, and we try to treat, treat each student as a unique individual with unique needs and unique capabilities. Um, and you can read the rest uh, of, of what I've got here, um, but especially important are the last two points which is to foster a sense of responsibility, respect, community, courtesy, and tenacity in our learners. They hear that word tenacity a lot. Uh, and to enable in them a sense of global citizenship. They have a responsibility to the planet. Um, and they, they hear me talk, we, we go out and we collect garbage in the neighborhood. Um, 
you know, we, uh, I actually go to the beach uh, pretty much every weekend and clean up trash. So we really want to uh, get them to understand the importance of, of that kind of uh, behavior. Um, Jamie, can you speak to this slide in particular? I know I'm calling you uh, sort of cold, but I think you're able to speak about this, Jamie. About this slide? Yeah. The first thing on the slide is to encourage academic, emotional, social, and personal growth in each for in each unique learner. This is really this is something I would say Maple Canadian College has succeeded in a lot because before I came to Maple Canadian College. I'll have to say that I was a very, very shy person. I didn't really know how to communicate or talk to people in public. But then when I came here, they were able to help me grow emotionally and academically, socially as well as a person. The next thing in the, on the slide is to encourage learners so encourage learners authentic, authentically and meet them where they are. I think that can that's a, that can be explained individually. Then to respect we, students. We just sorry. We, sorry, we just want to make sure that you know meeting students where they are sort of suggests the idea of you know wherever you are academically, socially, in terms of character development. That's where we meet you and then try to help you grow from there. So yes. that's sort of what that means, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then to respect students as capable, responsible, curious young adults. Now, do you get that sense from the teaching staff and the administration? Yes, everyone, everyone, everyone has a sense of belonging at Mabel Canadian College. We respect each other and Maple Canadian College teaches every one of us to be responsible for our actions, making us to grow as wonderful young adults and human beings as well. Okay, thank you. And um, praise, maybe you can talk about the last two on this slide. The responsibility, respect. Okay. Any so um talking about our first i would like to take the last one before i go to the one so to enable a sense of global citizenship and personal ownership in students so and for example in eng for you when we started we um took up the topic global citizenship and this is english by the way a lot. english actually do pardon yeah, I'm just ENG for you is English. Okay, sorry. I just want to make sure people know. Yeah, so we actually took up the topic global citizenship, and global citizenship helped me um, become more aware of my surroundings. Like now, for instance, Mr. Stanley talked about during that period. Mr. Stanley talked about how um, quite he he focused on climate change and how. Um, our oceans were filled with plastic. So he actually went out and bought um, usable bottles for us so we didn't have to stop um, using plastics. And also he mentioned how he goes to pick trash. We've done a couple of community service um, programs over the our period in Maple and Enclosure. We had to clear the drainage, pick trash, pick plastic. And there's some pictures on our Instagram page if you want to see more about that. And then to foster a sense of responsibility, respect, community, courtesy, and tenacity in our leaders. This is one thing Mr. Hanley is very passionate about, tenacity. Because you have to build this course and this school makes you build tenacity. Because I before um, was not someone, if I started a task and the task became difficult, I would usually just lay back and be like, oh, I can't do this anymore. And coming to Maple Canadian College has made me decide that be intentional and meticulous about my task, meaning I have to be 
I'm focused on what I'm doing and see it to the end, no matter what comes or the challenges that come. And, and this was made me realize that the challenges that come build you and they build your character. Exactly. Thank you so much. And one of the things we talk about too at Maple Canadian College is how, you know, um, <clears throat> I read an article about happiness. And they were, the article made a very good point that people who are on a search for happiness, they think they're going to find that in a shiny new vehicle or, you know, material kinds of uh, um, acquisitions. But really, what makes a person happy, the word happy is not the appropriate word. The appropriate word is fulfilled. So you gain fulfillment by overcoming obstacles in your life and pushing through, having that tenacity to push through, and that builds character and that's what makes people happy. You know, not a trip to a sunny island, not a shiny new car. Uh, those things give you momentary, momentary happiness. But what really brings happiness is a sense of fulfillment. Um, so, uh, um, to move on, our location. Oh, go ahead, Grace. Someone has a question about the um, boarding life. Yeah. Okay, let me just uh, find that. One second. Thank you for alerting me. So, the question is boarding and dorm life. Um, so, uh, Alicia, or I should say Jamie, do you want to talk about? Uh, I'll get all three to talk about it. Jamie, first. Okay. Okay, um, Maple Canadian College provides facilities for a comfortable and peaceful reading and resting environment. The meals are provided for students who are boarding three times a day every week. And there are also recreational activities to keep the students busy as well, such as words, ludo, several other things to do. And on several occasions, we have been taken out to recreational places, recreational centers like the beach, for example, to just let off some steam. And I'm, yes. <laughs> I, I'm trying to get everyone to learn how to swim. And so we went to a swimming pool and we've been to the beach and we're getting, uh, you know, uh, Io to float on his back and we're getting to Lou to not be so afraid of uh, the water that she has to hold on to the edge of the pool, even when her feet are on the bottom. Um, so, you know, uh, I, I want these kids to know how to swim. They're going to come to Canada or the UK, maybe not so much in the UK, Alicia. Um, <laughs> but, you know, there's swimming. Everybody swims. So. Um, so that's one of the things we try to we try to do. Um, okay, so that was Jamie. Let's go to Alicia on dorm life. Um, well, Maple Canadian College has actually provided a safe space for us, honestly, and we have always the uh, we have our different house parents. They have taken us in us. Everybody's comfortable in the dorm, right? And there's a routine at the dorm. Maybe, uh, Praise, you can talk about the dorm routine, studying, and so on. Okay, so on Saturdays and Sundays, we have the cleanup, and sometimes Mr. Barrow came by herself to come and supervise <laughs> the cleaning. We're laughing because there were some times that she was just like, <laughs> she was so ashamed and disappointed about how the hostel was. But, well, I won't say it's because we are boys, but after that uh, scenario and instance, we actually had to like step up to what they wanted and the expectations were. 
So as Mr. Stanley said, there's a routine for studying as well. So on Saturdays, everyone wants to relax, but in this kind of curriculum, you relax, but not too, you don't get too much. Too much. <laughs> yeah. So you have to, on Saturdays, we wake up, do the cleaning up for like two hours or so. Then let's say in the afternoon or by 11, you have your study, your first study period. And um, after that, you do assignments, projects, research work. And then lunch comes by, I think, 1 or 12, 1, I think, yes, 1 o'clock. And then on Saturdays and Sundays, they bring our food to the hostels. And our hostel is pretty secure, actually. We have um, a security guard that mans our gates all the time. And you're not allowed to go out without letting your house parent know. Also, concerning our house <coughs> parents, like Mr. Steve and Mr. Um, Sam have, they're like my dad in school. I, I talk to them about different things. It could be spiritual, physical, mental. Like no matter what um, you're going through, you just know that you're, the, the, the way the house parents have built the bond is that they're there for you no matter what. So we build like a family. We call it the bro, the bro cave, the bro cave. So we are there and <laughs> we talk, we make, we have fun. We have fun. Although Mr. Barrow stopped us and our community stopped us from playing football in a compound but then all the same we're still having fun and yeah the hostel life is if you want the best for your child and you want your child to be more focused i would advise um staying at the hostel because you don't have to be worried about um coming to pick your child in the morning or or dropping your child in the morning and coming to pick them in the afternoon so the, the school just takes care of everything for you Great, thank you very much, Bruce. Um, so there's another question um, saying, uh, supposing a student has to take grade 11 math when they enter the school, can they also start to take grade 12 math at the same time so that they can have more time practicing it and don't have to just take it in the second semester? Well, uh, so we have a, a solution called uh, Solero, and um, that can be used by the student or by the teacher to uh, review material, anything, any math, English, or science course in Ontario is covered in this, uh, this app. Um, you can download it from the App Store, actually. Um, but we provide it to our students at no charge to them. Um, and uh, so they could be working on some grade 12 stuff and seeing how they do with Solero. They could be, you notice in the timetable, from 4 to 5 o'clock after school is sort of officially done, we have a period, a, an hour-long period where students can get extra help from teachers. So if a student were uh, in grade 11 math and sort of, you know, studying up on grade 12 math, um, that's possible. But I have to tell you, each of these three students took grade 11 math first, and then they took grade 12 math. And I can tell you that the grade 11 math, the class average was somewhere around 90, 92. And the grade 12 math is both the calculus and vectors and the advanced functions, the two grade 12 uh, math classes, the students, the class averages are in the 90s. So, um, Praise, can you talk a little bit about, do you think it would have been an advantage to, while you, in the first semester, be sort of focusing a little bit on the grade 12 curriculum as well? Um, no. I don't, well, it depends actually because taking the grade 11 and grade 12 at the same time would be really, really um, tasking and draining, coupled with the fact that you have other subjects to do, a, like a, English, chemistry, um, physics. So if you're, you're saying that, okay, I want to do the grade 11 math, grade 11 math is obviously more advanced, it's called advanced functions, it's more advanced. And if you did add math or further math in secondary school, grade 11 math would be like walkover for you. But then grade 12 is more difficult. So I'd advise that you take both grade 11 and grade 12. 
just to be established in math curriculum. And next year, because we we found that very, very successful. The math students have, you know, achieved beyond our expectations. I've got to tell you, I've never seen a class of students get a class average in the 90s in one of the most rigorous math curriculums on the planet. Uh, Canada is ranked number one in math and reading. And so this is the curriculum that these students are taking. And, uh, you know, the grade 11 math has really, really helped them transition to the grade 12 math. So next year, we're going to be offering the grade 11 English as well. So the students will take a diagnostic test in English. And if they have some issues that need remediation, that need you know, they need to up their game, they'll go into grade 11 English and then do grade 12 English in the second semester. So, as I mentioned before, they have to have six grade 12 su subjects to graduate, and they have a total of eight periods during the year, four first semester, four second semester. So, they could take both the grade 11 English and math and then still have time to do the other uh, six subjects that they need to get done. So go ahead, Jamie. Um, for this question, I would actually, I would advise looking at your course combination. Because if you're someone like me that is a science student and you are taking biology, chemistry, advanced functions, grade 11 and 12, calculus and nutrition and health as an elective, you're going to have a lot of work on your hands. So I would advise taking grade 11 math first semester because first semester for me, I had ENG for you, that's English, English, grade 11 math, chemistry, I had basically just three courses, but these three courses, trust me, they were not easy at all as a science student. It wasn't easy. So grade 11 math, very, very tasking. You really need a lot of time to break down the formulas that are here. So you really, you need to look at your subject combination if you want to do grade 11 and 12 the same time. You need to. Yeah. So, you know, we try to transition the students and make sure they, they're on a path that's going to make them successful in the course that they want to, uh, um, in the program of study that they want to end up in after high school. So we don't just worry about high school, we worry about the student's life after high school and beyond that. So the character traits that we're trying to build that are on this slide here, those are traits that are going to last a lifetime. So maybe they don't use their calculus and vectors. Maybe they don't use, uh, you know, their world history uh, that they learned, but they've learned skills and attitudes during the study of those courses. So uh, very critical there. Um, okay, so if there are any other questions, um, please uh, put those in the text box. Uh, but essentially, what we're, uh, we're we're at the end of our time, and uh, any other questions? Oh, I'm getting an internet unstable thing again. Oh, it left. Um, Okay, so not seeing any other questions. Uh, let me thank everyone who attended. Um, uh, let me, um, oh, one more thing I wanna talk about is the other part of what we do at Maple Canadian College is we don't just deliver the education and say, okay, go off to university. We actually work with each student to do their university applications and to apply to the best schools for the program of study that they want to uh, go into and that they're best suited for. 
Um, and so we take care of that. We also take care of the visa processing. So Maple Canadian College is a division of Maple Education Canada. And Maple Education Canada has been in business for 19 years and has been in the business of enabling students to go to Canada to study. So Ms. Obaro used to live in British Columbia and she would bring groups of Nigerian students to this town where she lived in, in BC uh, on the west coast of Canada. And uh, so that's how things started. Then she moved to Nigeria to open up Maple Canadian, uh, sorry, Maple Canada. I I'm not saying that right, Ms. Navarro. Um, MEC, Maple Education Canada, uh, and they do visa processing. 18 years experience at this, so we take care of that for all our students as well. Um, Praise has, I think, got his visa, all the visa application is in, um, same with Jamie and Alicia. Uh, and, and by the way, with this uh, pandemic that's going on, um, at least in Canada, I know because my son's in the university sector at, in Canada, uh, representing 15 of Canada's largest universities. And the university system in Canada is very anxious to accommodate international students and get them here to study. Um, if the pandemic is still a problem, they would start online, and that could be from Canada or from Nigeria. And then when it's possible to get here, they will bring them over. But this organization called the U15 is lobbying the Canadian government Okay, my apologies, I am back. I don't know oh. what's going on with that, but um, so again, um, we take care of the university application, we take care of the visa application, a lot of experience there, um, and we get the students off to their country, uh, designated country. So what I was saying about the U15, they are lobbying the Canadian government to charter flights to bring 40,000 students to Canada in August. The plan is, the hope is that they can bring them in August, have them in quarantine in hotels, the Canadian government would pay for that, uh, put them in hotels for a two week quarantine and then uh, to um, residents and the residents whole, the, the paradigm for residents, normally two students to a room, it'll only be one student to a room, so the other student will be put in a hotel. Um, and again, no cost to the student. The Canadian education sector is working really hard to allow students to get here for the summer, sem or I'm sorry, the fall semester in September. Um, so they're working very hard on that, but again, it may be online, it may be a blend. Um, at Maple Canadian College, we, the students were in class on the Friday in March, uh, just before school closed down, and on Monday they started online with the same schedule we had had previously. So uh, the difference is now they're studying from home, so it's a little bit easier to lay on a couch and, uh, and so on, whereas in school uh, they can't do that. I see a smile on a couple of their faces there. So uh, if you have any questions, you can email me, principal at maplecc.ca, or you can email hello at maplecc.ca, and I also want to mention that if you go to our website, you will see that there's a link to a scholarship uh, opportunity. 
So this is a full scholarship worth 5.8 million Naira. It covers tuition, residence, uh, uniform, activities, meals, the whole thing. Um, and the deadline is fast approaching, so go to our website, find out what the process is, and get your application in because some very deserving student is going to earn a, 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 a scholarship to the school. Um, Okay, so uh, Ms. Fatima has put in the text messaging, the two email addresses. Uh, principal at maplecc.ca, hello at maplecc.ca. So thank you everyone for coming. I really appreciate uh, your indulgence as we had some uh, technical difficulties, but it's been pretty good. So thank you very much. And if you have any questions, uh, we'd love to field those. So send them along. Thanks very much. I'm going to close down the meeting and uh, really appreciate your attendance here. Thanks, folks. Thanks, Praise, Alicia, Jamie. <laughs> and Thank you. Bye. And all the Miss Ali. Miss yeah. Ali, sorry. Yes, There's no. one more question. There's one more question in the textbook. Ah, I see that. What was the name of the program against you? It's called the, uh, well, the program is through our school. It's Students Earn an Ontario Secondary School Diploma. That's the diploma that gets them into not just Canada, any school in the U.S., uh, in, in the U.K. Alicia's going to University of Sheffield. Um, so the Ontario Diploma is recognized globally. Uh, Ms. O'Barro, go ahead. Sorry, you want me to say something? Oh, you raised your hand, so I... No, 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 no. Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. Uh, I also see we have one of my uh, favorite guys in the, uh, uh, in the meeting, Mr. Praises Dad, I always call him. Praises Dad is here. Um, yeah, hi everyone. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. I see you. Good afternoon, sir. I see you. Great, great job you guys are doing. Thank you so much. Thank well done. Well, well you. done. You, you gave us a student that uh, is excellent, so... Wasn't I'm excited. Yeah, praise. He's such a great kid. And there's the Thank love. Thank you. Mr. Sam. Um, okay. Uh, and raises. Okay. We have one from, I'm just going to say, Mika. Allah, Mika. Do you have a question? Yes, sir. Uh, I have a question. Yes, sir. Okay. So my my question is, the program that you mentioned that gets students into Canada and puts them in quarantine, what was the name of it? Uh, well, it's, it's uh, an effort that's being driven by an organization called the U15. Just the letter U15. It's Canada's 15 top universities based on research spend. So it's the big ones, Toronto, McGill, uh, UBC, Alberta, uh, I think Dalhousie. Uh, so it's Canada's 15 biggest universities and they are a lobbyist organization. My son's the director of government relations. So he's working very closely with university presidents on how to accommodate international students um, because it's, it, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, university, international students coming to Canada is a $33 billion industry. So if that all of a sudden goes away, universities in Canada are in big trouble. So um, 
they're working very hard to try to accommodate the students and figure out ways to make sure they don't lose any time. So I hope that answers your question. Yes, Mr. Handy does. Thank you. You're quite welcome. I'm looking forward to having you in school. Okay, so thank you everyone. I really appreciate it. Uh, appreciate your uh, time today. Thank you so much for coming. And uh, again, uh, there is a webinar next Wednesday at 2 o'clock. Um, Ms. Fatima, can you remember what the topic of that one is? Hello, everyone. Hello, Mark. Hello. How are you doing? Next week, we'll be talking about immigration process. And we'll have Mrs. Obaro. Okay, so immigration. Talk through that session. Immigration, the visa, the university application, and so on. So that's next week, folks. You want to tune in. Um, Ms. Obaro will, will go through. Uh, and, and again, she's an expert at this. She's been at it for almost 20 years. Uh, I don't know if anybody else has been doing it for that long. So thank you very much again, folks. Uh, really hope to see um, a number of you at our school next year. Really looking forward to a great year next year. Uh, and uh, it's been a pleasure hosting this session today. So thank you once again, and have a great afternoon. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.